Erica and Sharon are sisters who began their grief journey in 2006 when Erica's 10-year-old son Austin drowned. Together, they participated in a grief education program were so moved by this experience, they studied and became specialists so they could help the brokenhearted find recovery. In 2015, tragedy struck their family once again when Erica's oldest son, Donovan, was killed in a motorcycle accident. Erica and Sharon are committed to sharing their experiences of love, loss, and healing through this podcast. Now your grief specialists, Sharon and Erica. Hey friends, welcome back. I am Sharon Brubaker, and here's my sister, Erica Honore, and we are HealingStartsWithTheHeart.com. We are a podcast that's for and about grievers. We're here to help shed some light, we hope, that we can shed some light on what you may be experiencing at this most precious time in your life. Correct, Erica? Absolutely. Grief is so challenging. And due to a lot of the misinformation that's out there and, you know, a lot of mistakes that people make when they start their grieving journey, hopefully we could be a guide for those individuals and really um, give them some, some helpful tips on what they need to do to start mending their hearts. What's really cool about today's show is we actually got a question from a griever. She actually sent us across a question and she's, we, we titled the show, I remember, but everyone wants me to forget. And it's sort of like where people are trying to get you to move on. Girl, you got to right. move on. You can get over this. You can get over this. Or when people say, you're still talking about that? Like they get offended or something. Like, I don't even know. Is there a rule out there for how much time we should sh- been grieving when we've lost a child, when we've gone through a divorce, when our dogs died. I didn't see the rule book. Did you ever see that rule book? I've never seen a rule book, but I definitely know that there is some sort of timeline out there. You should be over it. You know, in in some cases, people feel like months, like, okay, I don't want to hear about this anymore. You need yeah. to move on with your life. You, you and I've shared another show where that really comes to play is in social media when people are just Mm -hmm. sick of hearing your story and they'll tell you straight out. But you got an amazing uh, message this morning from someone. Why don't you share that with our friends? I did, I did. I'm so excited to share it. So it's, you guys are on fire with these podcasts. Keep up the good work. I have told and shared with so many friends and it's changing lives. That just, oh my God, my heart was like running over with, with joy when I got that. That is so cool. I was so excited when you read that this morning, but she also follows it with a question. And what was her question? She does. She has a question. So she has experienced a grieving event recently, and she wants to know what to do when your supporting circle is kind of over you sharing about it. You know, where does she turn? What is her next step? She is paying for therapy. She's like, but that's only once a week. So, you know, yes, I go to pour my heart out to that person that I'm paying. But in my everyday life, what do I do when my, my circle is tired of hearing me cry or be angry or whatever the emotion is she's feeling? Okay, let's start here. Number one, grievers need to talk. They have to tell their story. They have this overwhelming urge to tell their story and talk about what happened. I almost say, Eric, it's like this. It's like, that's how the information actually gets settled in our brain, is when we hear ourselves say it out loud. How many times did you and I repeat the Austin story after Austin died? I can't even count. I can't even count. It It was was every every day. Every single day. It was every single day for, I don't even know what period of time, but we started the day the same way, with a phone call, and we both started telling our story, and we did it over and over and over. Okay, so what were we doing? What, number one, I didn't know why we were doing it, but there was a comfort in doing it. Do you remember that? It was like, I loved hearing you tell your version of it, and I know you loved hearing me tell my version, and it always, you always started with, and then I got the call, and then you knocked on the door. It was like we always started at that same point. Yeah. Partly we felt like that was grieving too. We felt like we were grieving, but there was this need for us to tell the story over and over again. There was a need. And I don't know if I felt that it was grieving because I didn't know what was happening to me. I mean, my whole life, I just felt exploded. 
So, but yeah, there was some comfort in telling the story. And all, you know, I think in telling the story, it was help build our, we still were trying to hold on to that connection with Austin. Yeah. For me, I felt like if we kept talking about it, we're still connected to him. I didn't feel that way. What I felt was that I didn't, I couldn't even believe it happened. And that by hearing you say it out loud, it was like, it was almost like a voice was playing subconsciously in, in the back of my mind that was saying, it's true, Sharon, he's gone. It's true, Sharon, he's gone. Like every time I heard you tell it, but this overwhelming urge to talk about it was just there. Can you imagine, Erica, you and I had each other, which was so cool, but a person that doesn't have that safe space to talk, I, I can't even imagine what it's like for them. That makes me so sad for people when they come in and they, you know, share their stories with me and I'll ask about their, you know, what's your home life like? Who do you have supporting you? And sometimes people don't have anyone mm -hmm. or they have people, but like we've said, they're tired of hearing it. Yeah. They don't want to hear it anymore. They don't want to hang out with that person because it's like, oh, she's a Debbie Downer. No, she's grieving. Her heart is broken. And the fact that you can't, you know, be there, which is common to listen you know, that's, that's sad. That just, just makes the grieving experience 10 times worse. And so what happens is when people aren't prepared to hear the story, they'll either change the subject, they'll interrupt you, you start telling you're having a really bad day, and they interject right in there and start telling their own sad story of what happened to them, or they start talking about the Dodger game or the football game or the basketball game, anything that they can to change the story. But quickly the griever realizes, oh, wow, they don't want to hear what I have to say. And they shut down. Mm -hmm. they, they literally shut down, which can elongate the grieving process. Do you agree? Yeah, because if you can't, if part of the process is to be able to tell your story and you're not being able to do that effectively, absolutely that makes it the process go even longer because you haven't even been able to complete the first step. So it's like you need you need to find, and we talk about this and we it, all the time, the action steps. You need to take action. You can't just, if you're not getting the result that you need, you need to go find a place where you can tell the story and then you're getting a guided person to say, okay, now we have to do this. Like I'm who totally empathizes with you and says, okay, let's do this as step two. Do you, I believe that some of the reasons that people cut you off or they interject their own story, is not always about that they didn't want to hear you, but sometimes they're afraid that you're going to get emotional and they won't know what to do with that. Oh my gosh. What if Erica starts crying and she starts crying about both of her sons that have died? What am I going to do with that? It's actually their freak out. And they're in a way trying to protect you from going there because they don't know what to do with it. That is so true that, you know, people are very uncomfortable with grief because we've never really talked about it. People don't really sit around and talk about grief. So yeah, when you, you, you don't want someone to break down on your watch, yeah. you're like, let me just get away. I'm going to slowly move away and maybe, you know, Susan will come up and